Hello everyone, welcome to Ask Gamers. I'm Carolyn Page. I like giving advice about sexy stuff and I love open world RPGs and strategy games. I'm Emma Fife. I love a good story game. I dabble in platformers and I believe in the power of friendship. I'm Chrissy Costanza. I am a longtime League of Legends fanatic, but I love MOBAs in general. And I love giving you the toxic advice that actually works, but you're not supposed to actually tell people. <laughs> you go to her and you're expecting her to approach you with empathy and compassion and instead she just goes straight for the jugular. Brutal empathy. I'm honest because I care. You don't need to sugarcoat it and work around the bush. Like, no, we'll just get right into it. Speaking of getting right into it, our first question today is from Nate. Gamers are typically labeled as antisocial or isolated because the stigma is that we just coop up in our rooms and play video games. But this couldn't be farther from the truth. What do you think are the extent to which video games can connect people? And a second part to that question, with the world gradually opening up, a lot of people have become socially awkward after not meeting people for so long. How would you advise people to start getting back into social life? Oh boy, that is a loaded question. I will say as somebody who is gradually getting myself back out into the real world, it does feel awkward and unnerving. I would say to lean on your communities, lean on the people who have been your virtual friends throughout the pandemic, and you can share with them that you are experiencing some sort of feelings of awkwardness and being unsure what to do. And just be aware too that you are not alone. Everyone is in the same boat. My favorite thing is thinking of life as a video game and you're just getting IRL XP every time you venture out in the world. But also, I just gotta say it, why socialize when you could just stay home and play more video <laughs> games? Like, I'm already just literally holing up in my room playing video games, so this is just, like, will there be that much of a change? Like, I don't know, like, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll come, maybe we'll come be, you know? I love that. And I'd say, just like in a video game, do the tutorial. Like, yeah. go, <laughs> go to a grocery store and just like, Say hello to someone in passing. Ease back into it. Wait, talking to strangers, saying hello to a full on stranger? That's high level. Okay, I'm very outgoing, so I don't know. You're getting into PVP territory. <laughs> I have to tell you, I have the perfect solution to how to talk to strangers. Just talk to dogs. I say hello to every single dog that I encounter, but I don't talk to their owners. So I am gradually working my way back to talking to actual human beings. Also, I did go to my neighbors and we played Mario Kart together, like split screen, and it was really fun. So. Just bear in mind that video games can still be part of your IRL social life as much as they are part of your online social life. 100%. Okay, Brady would like to know, when it comes to content creation, a lot of people experience burnout and struggle to return to form. What advice would you give somebody to help them come back stronger and refreshed? I think burnout is something that all of us experience when we're passionate about something, but I think when you love something and and you love what you do, you have a lot of trouble drawing boundaries. If you don't have a concrete work day because you work in content creation, give yourself a concrete work day or like block things off in hours. I'm not gonna work after this time. I'm only gonna work in this window, etc. Like you need to create a space for work and then a space when you're not working. Absolutely. I will say I saw a meme that was instead of do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life, it said, do what you love and you will have no boundaries and take everything personally, which is <laughs> very, very true and something that you really do do need to be cautious of. So as you say, Chrissy, setting those boundaries is so, so important. I figured out for myself, I like to work on the content that I am creating during the day and I like to have my evenings free. And sometimes in the evenings, all I'm doing is playing video games that in theory I could be streaming, but I still need that time for me. I love that. Healthy boundaries. Totally. Oh, I'm hopeful. Yes, I am hopeful for today. So before we move on to our official final question of the episode, let's go through some honorable mentions. First of all, Boris asks, what 
sort of vegetables and fruit should I plant in the garden? Of course, I want to answer this question because I love uh, plants and gardening and all of that, but I, we can't really answer this question without knowing more about your garden. If you get a lot of sun, it's very hard to go wrong with cherry tomatoes. So I would say cherry tomatoes. <laughs> we stand Boris. Boris is a wholesome lad and we love Boris. That's all I have to say about Boris. Lou asks, are men with big swords trustworthy? No, because they're compensating for something else that isn't big. <laughs> they're self-confidence. I mean, my main experience with a man with a big sword is that he had a conflated personality and kind of thought he was somebody else. So I would also say no. You're talking about Cloud, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Always. Yep, yep <laughs> always. Finally, Hannes asks, does Utah exist? <laughs> We cannot disclose this information at this time. We can neither confirm nor deny the existence of Utah. Let us know though, if you have any insight. Moving on to our final question today, Minty Squids asks, how open should you be about geeky and gaming hobbies when filling out a dating profile? Ooh. Very. I think gaming is the way of life. I think even people that aren't gamers can connect over gaming. And a little hot tip here that I helped uh, I helped my friend put in their dating profile. Oh. Don't say specifically what games you're into, even though that might seem like what you would want to do. Just ah. say that you're a gamer because that invites conversation. Yeah. And if you put like a specific game, like say I put League of Legends, someone who doesn't play League but is a gamer might not match with me because they're like, oh, I don't play League, I don't really care about that game, whatever. But if I just said a gamer and then they're like, oh, I wonder what games, and then they match me and then I'm like, I love League, what do you like? And they're like, I like this game. And I'm like, oh, I don't really play that game. Maybe you could teach me sometime, you know? It's a built-in icebreaker, I love that. Also, why would you hide it? Because why would you want to match with someone that doesn't like geeky and gaming things? You definitely don't want to be with somebody that doesn't immediately appreciate your passions. I mean, let's be real. We all like kind of lost a year of our lives during the pandemic. So I'm all about just oversharing and brutal honesty from the get-go when it comes to dating now. A hundred percent. I would strongly agree with that as well. Specifically about the games, like leaving that vague, but if you have specific other hobbies, like if you're a big Warhammer, like tabletop fan or like a Magic the Gathering fan, you can list those things specifically and maybe yeah. they'll inquire about like, oh, I've never heard about this like yeah. show or something. That's all our advice. We just fixed your relationship problems. You're welcome, internet. Or we started you on the way to a beautiful new relationship. We can't wait for our wedding invitations. Like, are you gonna go to the wedding also? <laughs> Thanks for watching everybody. Please send in more gaming questions on our Discord. You can tweet at us at watchven. We're here to help you and we wanna help you. Yeah, bye. 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 <laughs>